Welcome to Zurich, Switzerland. This is our hometown and we're going to show you how this hometown looks like. And we are here at the main railway station in Zurich, uh, which looks like a very traditional place, like an old railway station. Actually, this railway station has three railway stations, the traditional one at the street level and two railway stations underneath and the whole transport system in the city and in the country actually converges here suburban trains intercity trains regional trains trams and buses and some cable cars as well and the railway station has some art also there's a Niki Sanfal installation here and they are using this old hall also for some events they're just installing some kind of art we don't really know what that is but it's probably gonna look pretty cool. Switzerland is a land of trains and from Zurich you can travel by train to France, to Italy, to Germany, to Austria, to the Balkan states and somewhere else in Eastern Europe too. Sometimes on high speed as well. And from the main railway station, the Bahnhof in German starts the Bahnhofstrasse, which is the main shopping street. And as Switzerland is a land of banks, chocolate and watches as well you can find it all on the Bahnhofstrasse. there are probably more than 20 jewelry shops where you can buy all the watches you need probably it's losing a little bit of charm because it's going up on luxury and down on popularity so let's check it out We are here at the Paradeplatz, which is on the way to the lake on the Bahnhofstrasse, and here you have the banks. You have the UBS and the Credit Suisse, the biggest banks in Switzerland, in fancy houses. And this is also a transport hub in Zurich. You can see the trams going around, and there's no cars here. We, when we were living in Zurich, we didn't have car, a car either. We did everything on the tram. You just have to know that the trams have absolute priority. If you're a pedestrian, always look up for the tram. And a day pass in Zurich for the whole network for 24 hours costs 8 francs 80. It's about 7 euros 60. With that you can travel unlimited on the city network for 24 hours. And in Switzerland what's really interesting, you can drink the water from every fountain in the city. Sometimes they have these special ones just for drinking. Sometimes they even have bigger ones. And you just take the water and refill your bottle, which is very practical. And in Zurich there's one shop everybody should visit, it's called Sprungli. It's a chocolate shop with a lot of specialities and we will buy now one and show you which one you have to buy. And this chocolate here is my favorite chocolate. It's a dark chocolate with hazelnuts from the Piemont from Italy and it's made from hand. And my favorite cake, if you ever come here, is this one. It's a raspberry cake and it's 48 Swiss francs, which is around 40 euros, but it's to die for. And this is a must-eat uh, sweet from Springli. It's called Luxemburgerli. And this is what's inside. They always have limited editions, so today they have also the strawberry rhubarb. And it's actually a meringue, inside is a buttercream. Mm. It's like a macaron. To die for. Mm. And, and this we keep for later. No. No. This is Marty's second favorite. This is Fleur de Sel caramel. And this is my favorite, vanilla. Bon appetit. of the Bahnhofstrasse you will arrive to the Lake Zurich and here behind me actually is the ticket office where you can book a ticket for a lake cruise and there are three different lake cruises available so there's a small one which is around one hour going with the boat and it's around eight euros and then there's a middle sized one which is around 18 euros but it's including a lunch and then there's a four hour trip on the lake 
which is around 21, 24 euros if I remember right. And you just, just can come here, you have like on the train station, you have a uh, ticket office and also all the, the boats which are leaving signposted on the board. So it's very practical and especially on a day like this, it's a beautiful experience. Behind me you can see the boat actually just leaving, that's a small lake cruise and actually with your 24 hour ticket which you can buy for public transport, the boat ride is actually included. So always ask to be sure at the ticket office but most of the boats are included in the 24 hour Zurich ticket. And behind me you can see over there that's the Zurich Opera, the building, the big building with the white cupola if you want to go to the opera. Super expensive in Zurich, goes up to 400 or 500 euros. And then there is a, a public bath house called Utuke, which is really beautiful because you can jump directly here in the lake and swim in the lake. You can even drink the water from the lake, it's so clean. And then on the other side, over here behind the boats, there's a bar, there's a bar die Enge, that's another public bath where you can go and even in the cold winter months if you come here in winter they do a sauna, so you go in the sauna and then you jump into the lake. And on the Limmat, where actually the Lake Zurich is emptying, here on the right, there's another public bath which is just located on the shore and it's called the Frauenbadi, which means woman bathhouse and it's only accessible of course for women cross the Limmat, the bridge behind me and go to the old part of Zurich, to the old town actually, which is also called the Dörfli, the little village. On the bridge which is going over the Limmat actually there are three flags and on these flags there's always a special flag and if you don't know what the special flag means there's always a sign underneath and that's the festival which is actually taking part currently in Zurich. The skyline of the Zurich city center is dominated by three churches. We have the Korsmünster, which is the cathedral. It's founded by Charlemagne in the 9th century. It has some glass works inside of Giacometti. And you can climb the southern tower. It's called the Karlsturm. You have a fabulous view from there. Then there's the St. Peter's Kirche here, which is the St. Peter's Church. The tower is from the 13th century. And it has the largest clock face in Europe. It's 8.7 meters big. And then we have the Frau Münster, that's Our Lady's Church, that's also from the 13th century. It has stained glass windows from Marc Chagall. Five windows are made in 1971 and the rose window that's facing the south is from 1978. Standing now on the Münsterbrücke, which means Mün Münster Bridge. Münster is of course a church and this is a very touristic hotspot. Behind me you can see the beautiful panorama of the Swiss mountains, of the Alps and of course the lake of Zurich. And then when we turn over here there is the Frauenmünster, which was Marty explaining earlier with the beautiful Chagall windows inside. And then over here you look downtown with the Limmat River. And over here to the other side you have uh, the Großmünster, the other church. So from this point here you can take beautiful pictures of all the sites, of most of the sites in Zurich actually. In 
in the old part of Zurich there is a really beautiful shop which you shouldn't miss. It's called Schwarzenbach Kolonialwaren, which means actually Schwarzenbach grocery store. And you can find all special herbs and chocolates and coffee and everything you would think of. It's very interesting just to stroll quickly through. And right next to it, they have their own coffee roastery in the middle where they, I think they're still roasting the coffee once a week and open the window and the coffee aromas. You can smell it all over here in the little um, passes of the old, old town. And next to it is the coffee, coffee Schwarzenbach where you can then sit down and enjoy your coffee and choose between different beans where you want your coffee to be made from. So definitely a highlight. And in the old town you can find the Cabaret Voltaire which is the home base of the Dada movement. This is actually where the Dada movement started some hundred years ago or so. And you can still uh, attend exhibitions and readings and stuff like that in this original building. The old town of Zurich or the Dörfli as they call it here is a place where you can easily spend a whole afternoon. They have lots of independent stores here cafes, restaurants and places to hang out like these little green parks in the middle. Very, very pleasant, especially on a glorious day like this. So I was talking earlier about the punctuality of the Swiss transport system. Here you can see a board behind me that shows you exactly what time the tram is arriving and uh, the Zurich people get really upset if the tram is 30 seconds late. They plan their journey actually with it, so they know exactly at what time they're supposed to arrive. So it's kind of normal, they leave the car home and they only use the transport, the public transport. And now we are heading to the more modern part, to the more hipster part of Zurich, where we will show you a little bit more of the post-industrial part of Zurich. And it's unfortunately getting a little bit cloudy now, so let's hope that it's not going to rain. Now in the Kreis 5, which means yeah. Area 5, and this is the area where we also used to live and we were living in Zurich. It's a little bit more modern part, of course not so beautiful like the old town. And here next to the Limmerplatz is a wonderful coffee house which is called Café Lang. It's beautiful for coffee, for breakfast, for aperitif in the evening. So, worst to come here. Let's have a coffee. We're here at the Kreis 5. This is the fifth uh, district of Zurich. This is the hip and upcoming area of Zurich. And one of the landmarks here is the Freitag Tower. Freitag brothers are creating bags from uh, lorry tarps or truck tarps and uh, created a hype all over the world with these bags. And this is their flagship store in Zurich where the whole design comes from. And up there, on the rooftop, you can watch the trucks go by on the street. So you are kind of doing truck spotting, where you can see where your bag is coming from. Each bag is unique. And the Freitag Tower is actually hiding another tower, the Prime Tower, which at one point was the highest building in Switzerland. Now it's been surpassed by another building. But this uh, is mostly offices and up there on the roof or on the last floors there's a cool bar and a restaurant where you have amazing views of Zurich. Between the uh, Freitag Tower and the railway tracks there's an area called Frau Gerold's Garten, the garden of Mrs. Gerold. And they're watching football, there's a uh, private uh, public viewing there and it has a margarita bar a beer bar, a gin bar, and a lot to eat. So this is a cool place for the summer especially. If you want to surf in Zurich, you can choose the Limat where there's no waves, or this surf spot in the middle of the city.
Ice Film, of course, is also the best area for clubbing. And I'm standing in front of the best club in Zurich, probably the best club in Zurich. It's called Hive, and it has every weekend massive parties. And uh, if you want to come party, you have to come around midnight, half past one, or half past midnight, one o'clock. And the parties go until six in the morning, seven in the morning, sometimes the whole next day. And in this area, it's actually really nice just to stroll around in the afternoon. And uh, you can see over there, there's a little Helsinki design shop. So there are many shops in the side street you can discover. <laughs> and restaurants and bars and places to go and have dinner also. And get lost in Kreis Feuth. So we went home for a shower after our tour of Zurich. And tonight we are going to have a Swiss speciality, which we haven't had for a long time. And we're going to have fondue. Of course, this is not very summery, but it's still delicious. Let's go in. Yeah. So our dinner has arrived. This is actually a, the cheese fondue. Maki was saying before only fondue, so it's a cheese fondue. And there's the bread, and Marty is going to show you how you have to do this for all of those of you who haven't done it. And there, on this side, there are also some potatoes with the skin, small potatoes. You can also uh, fork them up. But first, let's see how the classic way goes. Bread in the night. There's like all kinds of like fondue knife. No, fork. Not fork. Right. Fondue yeah. fork. And then you mix it like this. You can make some eggs. And you shouldn't lose your bread. So, what happens if you lose your bread? You have to pay the drinks. <laughs> so, this one has a special name. It's called Moitié Moitié. Half Gruyere, half Wasch, half Ribourgeois. Two different cheese, half half. The best. We are done with the fondue, and at the bottom there is a crust, and this is called La Religieuse. The religious. And I'm gonna share this. What are you doing with the crust? I'm eating it. And what's so special about it? It's everything concentrated. So the usual dessert for fondue is the meringue with double cream from Gruyere and we added also chocolate mousse to this because it's a half speciality. And what is actually exactly creme de Gruyere? Creme de Gruyere is a thick cream that has a minimum 45% of fat and this one which comes from Gruyere where the cheese comes from also has 50%. <laughs> and the taste is sweet or sour? It's a bit sweet. <laughs> We're done with the dinner. We are very full, but it was super delicious. Uh, you must try this if you come to Switzerland. Maybe summer or winter, you have to have cheese fondue. There are two restaurants. One is the Free Burger Stübli and one is the restaurant Realp, which is a little bit outside of Zurich, but those are the must-go places for cheese fondue. And this was our stay in Zurich. Of course, there's much more to see in Zurich. Museums, other places, excursions outside, hikes, Fantastic mountains. Fantastic zoo, a lot of art, museums. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for watching. This was the way we saw it in Zurich, our hometown. Safe travels always. Hi, and where are we going next? It's a secret. And it's gonna be a new country tomorrow. Bye. Bye bye.